favorite one of all time. Ooh, that's tough. Uh, probably Bird by Bird, which is uh, by Anne Lamott. It's a book about writing, uh, not giving up after the uh, – not she calls them shitty first drafts uh so she said everybody has shitty first drafts don't stop at the shitty first draft keep going uh bird by bird if you will uh yeah. till you get to writing writing the good stuff welcome to the wp elevation podcast i'm jen mcinney and i'm the digital producer here at wp elevation today you're in for a big treat as i interview the carrie dills she's the presenter of office hours fm podcast she's a speaker a WordPress trainer, and has just authored a new book called Real World Freelancing, A No Bullshit Guide. Love that title. Today, Carrie and I unpack some of the strategies in the book, and we've got some great uh, tips that you can use in a checklist that you can download once you've listened or watched the podcast. Without further ado, let's go meet Carrie. This is the WP Elevation Podcast. Helping WordPress consultants elevate. Hey, this episode of the WP Elevation podcast is brought to you by WP Elevation. Well, more specifically, it's brought to you by a bunch of our happy customers. See, frankly, I feel a little bit awkward telling you how great WP Elevation is because you're probably not going to believe me because WP Elevation is my baby. It's something that we started over three years ago. Of course, now we're a team of of, of coaches and mentors, and we have hundreds, and by the time you're listening to this, probably thousands of members all over the world. But it still really is something that I'm very passionate about. And, and of course, if you join WP Elevation, we make revenue and we make profit. So it's a little bit awkward if I tell you how great it is, because you probably think I'm just trying to sell you on it. And partially I am, because I know how beneficial the program is. So what I'd love to do instead is just introduce you to some of our customers. So if you go to wpelevation.com slash the podcast, all one word, you'll be able to hear some of those stories from our customers and hear for yourself how WP Elevation has impacted their business and changed their lives. I hope you enjoy that and I hope you check it out at some point. Right now, let's get back to the podcast. Thanks for joining us on the WP Elevation podcast, Carrie Dills. It's so very nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, I saw on Twitter, on your Twitter feed that you were writing a book. And as soon as I saw the title, I thought I've got to get you on the program. Real World Freelancing, The No Bullshit Guide. Uh, I love that title. Thank you. We, uh, I'm, I'm working on it with a colleague and we kind of bandied around some, uh, some different names. But that one seemed to be the one that settled out as uh, both honest and true to, true to what, how we want the book to be. Perfect. So you're writing it, you're co-writing it with Diane Kinney. And um, I, I, I love what your concepts are around this. Why did you think it was important to write a book like this? I think it was, uh, well, t- to be first start, it was on my bucket list to write a book. So, <laughs> And when I looked at what is it that I uh, feel passionate about and have a lot of uh, information to share on, it's freelancing. I've been doing it for uh Oh, gosh, since 1998. And what the book is, is if I could go back in time to to my 22-year-old self and say, do this, don't do that. Let me tell you how to get over this hurdle and what to avoid and, and really sort of a roadmap uh, that I wish I had had that information available uh, when I was starting my own freelance journey. Perfect. I checked out the, the website that tells you a little bit about it and I like the way you've um, sort of got manageable chunks of really important things. And I especially like that you've got a section on mental health, which I think is so often overlooked. So I I love that you've included something about that in there as well. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm seeing people talk about it more, which is really encouraging. Uh, But you're right that uh, all in all, like when you're reading business books and kind of these self-help books of, you know, how to jumpstart your business, there's not really much mention of the uh, of the mental health aspect, and as people that are uh, freelancing or bootstrapping our own businesses, there's a lot there's a lot to discuss there, and you can't overlook uh, you can't overlook that. So yeah, I appreciate you noticing that. No, definitely, and I think because as freelancers too, you do so much stuff on your own, and you miss that interaction with people. So I think it's really important to keep that in check. 
But what we're going to do is, um, Carrie's been generous enough to write a bit of a checklist for us and, and give you some strategies that you can download um, after this episode. So we're going to talk through a few things that um, that we thought, Carrie, um, that were really important um, and that can give people a bit of a head start when, we, when they're getting into this. Um, one of the first ones we were talking about was managing time. How have you found that over the years? Oh my gosh, that's like the hardest one to wrangle, right? Because you can get distracted so easily uh you know go check out what's happening on facebook or twitter or whatnot and when you when you're working for yourself and you don't have uh, you know a boss or or you know these hard deadlines or people helping keep you on track <clears throat> or forcing you to keep on track uh it's quite easy to become distracted mm. um, but when your time equals the money that you're making i found that <laughs> i found that to be extremely motivating uh to stay on top of things but uh, I think the probably the, the number one thing to managing time is tracking it. So know where your time is actually going. Um, some days I feel like I have worked really hard and maybe it was a 10 or 12 hour day standing in front of my computer. Uh, but when I go back and actually look at what I accomplished, it's very little. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and there's uh, an app it's a, it's a free app and it just runs in the background on uh, on your computer. It's called Rescue Time, ah. and it you can configure it, uh, you know, based on which apps on your machine are work related and which are not work related. And you can say, okay, let's my work hours are eight to five or whatnot, and it'll track during that time exactly how much time you're spending in what app. And then each week you get a <clears throat> excuse me, you get a summary of that so it can say, uh, you know, I'm a developer, so uh, I spent 20 hours in my code editor. I spent, you know, 3% of my time on social media apps uh, or whatever it is, but it gives you, I mean, it's brutally honest and uh, there's no hiding. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But using that for a couple of weeks to kind of see where your time is actually going, I found to be tremendously helpful in keeping me uh, on track. That's a great idea. We uh, do you have to actually log in each time you're into a new thing, or does it just automatically pick it up? Nope, it just runs in the background oh, and, and automatically picks it up. That's so you great. forget it's there. Yes, it's, it's, dangerous. It's watching you, <laughs> dangerous. Yeah, because we've used ones before, but I hated it because you had to log in each time. And you know, when you're trying to when you're multitasking, which shouldn't be done anyway, but you know, you've got to log in, start the new one, and I just found it was too much hassle in the end. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're if you're looking to do specific time tracking, like for a project where you need to keep track of hours, that would, you know, I would suggest using something like you're talking about where you can start, stop, like almost punch a clock. Yeah. Uh, but if you just kind of want the landscape of where your time is generally going, uh, that's what Rescue Time is really good at. Sounds good. All right. Now, another big one is finances, and and especially when you're when you're starting out, um, you know where the money is coming in and out. What, what sort of tips have you got on managing finances? Oh, thankfully, this is this was one that somebody did tell my younger self. Uh, my my father actually, who's a quite savvy businessman, but um, the recommendation from the very start was to keep your personal finances separate from your work finances. Uh, have a separate bank account, have a separate uh, checkbook, credit card, or, or whatever it is. And if it's for work, you use that credit card. If it's for personal, you use your personal credit card uh, and keep them completely separate. And while you can intermingle them, it just is so much more like when you go to reconcile your books, mm. you're having to weed out, okay, what was personal? What was, <clears throat> what was a, a, you know, a, a business meal or, you know, I went out to, for a meeting and, uh, you know, I bought my colleague coffee. Okay. So that's, you know, wh- which category did this fall under? And when you start from the very beginning of just keeping that money in separate accounts and also mentally separating that money, right? So if I've got 10 K sitting in my business account, that doesn't mean I get to go on a wild shopping spree and get new, <laughs> get new jeans. <laughs> or whatever. I, I, I'm not thinking of that money as my money. Um, so that's probably my, my biggest tip. And then the second one would be, uh, to regularly reconcile your books. Um, what I mean by that is just, uh, stay on top of matching transactions. So like if you're using QuickBooks or FreshBooks or 
something like that, that um, once a week is what I do. And when you do it so frequently, it's just, I mean, I can knock it out in five minutes, five or 10 minutes max. But if you save it up for six months or even, you know, tax time once a mm -hmm. year or something, it becomes overwhelming. And then you don't remember even what that purchase was. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I know I say how many times I've done that. Uh, so I've, uh, those would be my two biggest ones. Keep things separate uh, and then reconcile regularly. Very good. And what, what do you use to do your books? I do QuickBooks Online. Mm -hmm. uh, I used QuickBooks desktop version for years, and um, now I found their online one really helpful. They actually have one specifically for freelancers okay. uh, that will help you calculate like your quarterly taxes uh, and some some uh, freelancer specific accounting uh, things. I don't love it because they've stripped out some of the other features yeah. uh, that are Im important to me. That's in the kind of the full version. Um, but, anyways, that's I don't know if it's the best. It's just the one I'm most comfortable in. And you don't mind doing the books yourself? Have you thought about getting someone else to do it for you? I have. That's a good question. Um, so I keep on I've always I'm kind of a numbers nerd like that I like seeing all that I like working with that information uh, so I don't mind doing it myself I do uh, when I when it comes time to prepare my taxes I do hire a CPA or a, an accountant to actually go through and make sure everything is right mm. um, just because I don't that's all a, a whole separate set of laws and requirements and I'm yeah. not on top of all that. Uh, so I let somebody else do that part, but just in terms of day-to-day -day management, I do it myself. But I know that you can hire people to do that and I think that's that's fine too. I just happen to like it. Yeah, and I think it's all about what, you, what your strengths are as well because some people, um, you know, I know for me, that would be the first thing I'd be thinking, right, as soon as I get some money in, I'm going to get someone else to do this so I can <laughs> concentrate on the stuff I'm good at and the stuff that I like. So I think that's the sort of stuff that as you grow, you can look at what, what can I outsource, what am I happy doing myself. You're so right. Yeah, play to your strengths for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, now, working in your business, um, that's that's another thing that is really important. What do you mean by working in your business? So, we all, we're working, right? We're doing client work, we're, we're working on developing our product or our course or, or whatever it is that we do that earns us money. That's where we're spending the bulk of our time. But when, and I'm, I misphrase that, so that's working in your business, right? You're getting stuff done. Working on your business, on the other hand, is, okay, let me take a step back from all the actual tasks involved with that, and let me do some uh, some visioning, some planning, some uh, goal setting, some where do I want to be, what direction do I want to take, do I need to look at hiring someone out or you know, outsourcing my uh, accounting tasks, or <clears throat> it's that discipline of spending time actually analyzing your business and what's going on and then making changes based on that. Like if you just get heads down and you're hundred percent of your time working in your business, doing, doing stuff, making money, that's great. Uh, but it, it, there will come a time when that either the work dries up or, oh my gosh, there's all this backload of, of, uh, kind of business management tasks that I've left unattended. Um, so the, the idea of working on your business, it doesn't have to be anything terribly formal, but mm -hmm. making conscious time, again, I like that once a week um, time frame, just to sort of evaluate what's going on, what's, what's working, what's not working. Um, for me, I actually bundle, all of that takes place on Friday mornings, so I don't schedule any meetings, uh, any calls on Friday mornings. And it's that, uh, you know, that first four hours of the day is where I can spend knocking out my accounting <laughs> reconciliation and then spending some time uh, actually on my on my business and on my goals. And do you find it's hard to um, strike that balance of working on and in your business? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, that's why I say it, 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 it's the discipline of, of doing that because as practitioners, 
we're really good. Like you go back to you're saying your strengths. We're good at what we do, right? We're we're mm. wonderful designers, or we're wonderful content marketers, or, or writers, or, or whatever it is that is our craft. We're good at that. Yeah. What's not fun for some people is putting on that administrative hat mm. uh, and really thinking <clears throat> more strategically about your business. And if that's if you're not naturally inclined to do those things, then you're just gonna shove off those tasks until eventually they come to bite you in the <laughs> yeah. bite you in the in the rear. So it's I like the way that you said right. I've set a, I've set aside a Friday, and that's the time that I'm I'm gonna do all of this stuff. So if you actually make that in your calendar and set it aside, it's actually gonna force you to do that instead of sort of, you know. Eating that frog is, you know, that book, <laughs> eat the frog. Yes. Yes, <laughs> Do exactly. the stuff you hate and get it over and done with. Get it over, yes. And when yeah. you put it on your calendar, that's such a great point. Uh, when it's on your calendar, you just protect that time. Like, of course, if an emergency happens or something, but don't use that time as, oh, there's stuff I didn't get done this week. I can always shove it over to Friday morning. Mm. Don't, do, don't do it. No. Nah. Protect that time, uh, and you know, find another time to get to the work that you didn't uh, that you didn't quite get to. But uh, it's easy to give up that time to work on something else. Yeah. Um, but if you if you keep pushing it off, no. yeah, you need yeah. to eat the frog. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I know with Troy because uh, I help manage his calendar, and every Thursday he's he's got this personal training at the gym. And so many times I, I'm like, oh, God, can we change that? Because this is really important, isn't it? That is what I've put aside. And again, that's for mental health as well as physical health. And um, there's we, ju we just know you don't change that, you know, no matter what, that stays there. And I think, you know, unless it's a, an emergency, if you do that, you just sort of get into that routine, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I, I, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I need to go to the personal trainer. <laughs> I need to get that time back in my calendar. <laughs> I know, I know. It's that trying to get those priorities in, isn't it? Uh, now, you over, you know, as a freelancer, I think it's important that you get out of your comfort zone and you challenge yourself. And I can see that you've done that, you know, even looking at your blog on, is it carriedeals.com? I, I can see that, you, you know, you've written a summary of 2016 and what your goals were and what you wanted to achieve. So, and I think um, writing goals is really important, but challenging yourself, but, um, but to a certain level. So, you know, how do you do that? How do you go about challenging yourself? Yeah, well, I... You know, you liken it to uh, toddlers when they're they're trying to figure out, test their boundaries, uh, and explore the world a little bit, and you know, go out, explore the, you know, see what's going on. But then you run back to to mama's skirt and grab her. Like you got to be safe about it, right? You can't if just go hang out and uh, I don't know many toddlers that could spend the night away from home, away from their mamas for <laughs> right off the bat. But anyways, that may, that analogy probably just got weird. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I think it's, when you talk about challenging yourself, taking small kind of calculated risks, so you're not hanging yourself out there fully. Because uh, if you fail, then you lose everything if you've taken a huge risk. But if you take tiny risks, incremental risks, uh, in the way that you uh, challenge yourself or maybe try, uh, I'm going to interrupt my own thought, but earlier this year, I thought, I'm going to do a membership site for my podcast. And I did one. I built one, uh, and it failed utterly and completely. For, the ten, <laughs> for all of the 10 people that signed up, I just refunded them their money. Oh. <laughs> but it was a small risk, right? There wasn't, uh, I wasn't putting all my eggs, uh, you know, I wasn't depending on that as my primary source of income. It was something that I was trying, uh, but the, the risk was overall very low. Um, but something, if you want to get like granular down to the actual project level uh, for, a, for a freelancer, I think it's, if, Let's say somebody comes to me and they're like, Carrie, I want to give you uh, $25,000 to build me this XYZ website. And I'm like, 
sign me up, $25,000. <laughs> I'm like, let's do this. But I look at the scope of what the project's involved in and only 10% is something that I'm really comfortable doing. The rest of it is like this huge unknown, I don't know how to do that, but I can learn it along the way sort of thing. Um, that would be like biting off way more of a challenge that I could chew. Uh, but if I look at a project and there's, um, you know, 80%, I got this, I could do it in my sleep. 20% is a stretch. It's going to force me to learn a little bit, something new to step out on a limb a little bit and take a risk. Mm. Then that's much safer. And I don't end up in a stressed off place when I, I'm just hanging out on a limb and I don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know if any of that made sense. Yeah, it does. It's it's about that calculated risk, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. So you know, you're you're on a bit of a, a cliff, but it's not a big cliff. So if you fall, you're not going to hurt yourself too much. <laughs> or if you're it's on a like the the mini diving board at the yes. at the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, as opposed to that big, huge one that you see in the Olympics. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. right because you don't want to take a risk that's so bad that it's going to put you off. You know, you've got you've got gifts, you've got talents, and if you take that risk that's too big, you know, you might be squashing something and that, that you could have actually given a, a good go. So I like the example of the membership site. And if you don't try those sort of things, you don't know if they're going to work. And as you said, it was easy to refund the, 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 te the 10 people. It wasn't fun, but, you know, you've learned something from that as well. So I think that's really important. Um, and I suppose, um, I think coming into all of this is, you know, that risk thing and, and looking after yourself, but mental health, I want to touch on that a bit as well. So, you know, I was saying, you, you know, Troy likes going to the gym. He, he does that for himself. What do you do? What have you found that, that just helps you tune off over the years and gives you some time for yourself? So this is going to sound, uh, probably ridiculous, but, uh, about two years ago, I made a rule for myself uh, that at least one weekend day, it didn't matter if it was Saturday, it didn't matter if it was Sunday, but one day of the weekend, I was not gonna open my computer at all. Uh, because what I was finding was I'd just, I'd, I'd work seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And even on the, on the weekend, if it was maybe, uh, I'd say, oh, it's only two or three hours of work, but my husband would say, it's still work. <laughs> and so, uh, for me, that's been a, a big thing for my family is saying that I'm not going to, I'm going to set aside a, a full day. Uh, and now I look forward to it. I'm like, that's Saturday. I don't have to, <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. Uh, but that's been one aspect that's important uh, for my mental health. And then the other one, and maybe kind of similar to Troy's, I don't have a personal trainer, uh, but at some, <laughs> at some point during the day, uh, I like to, and usually it's right in the big old middle of the day. I like to uh, leave my office uh, and go outside and just take a walk, take a run, um, just get a little bit of a, uh, a break in some space. Uh, and I always found eat. the weird part of that is even though you're, it feels like you're taking time away from your business to do those things. But when you do, like I always come back uh, like refreshed and a little bit more creative for having taken that time away. Mm. Yeah, I, I've actually been reading, uh, I can't remember the research on that, um, but there's been research on it that if you actually go and do that, you come back and you're so much more productive doing it. Yeah, and I think also um, if people aren't into exercise, I think it's a good thing just to get out there because you're getting a bit of exercise without even you know do, having to, to do anything. You're just having a little break as well. So. I think that uh, I've, I've got a dog, so I find that that's, that's good. I've got to walk him now, so I've got no excuse. <laughs> yeah, that's that's forced uh, exercise when yeah. you've got a dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh. in summing up then, I, I, I'm really looking forward to, to getting this book and seeing, you know, seeing what it's all about. But, you know, from your experience over the years, you know, what are the top three bits of advice? So someone starting out by themselves, what are the three bits of advice that you'd say, all right, you've got this, just remember this? Oh, my goodness. Um, it doesn't even have to be three, just, you know, the main. I, mean, <laughs> I would say community, uh, whether it's in person or online, uh, make a point to connect yourself. Because like you uh, alluded to earlier, when you're freelancing and you're working alone, uh, it can be very lonely. Mm. Um, and, and plus you get in the, just 
kind of in this echo chamber of your head. So making a point to connect with people, however it is that you're comfortable doing that, uh, is fantastic because it gives you a sounding board. Uh, you get input from um, other people and you just have someone to talk to, which is good. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so that would, that would, the community would probably be the biggest thing. And, And also it's, it has the, uh, the added benefit of being a potential lead generator for your business or, um, you know, can open the door for opportunities. Let's see what's in, I've got to come up with three. No, you said I didn't have to. One more. Give me one more. (laughs) One, one more. Um, (laughs) you know, so you said this earlier too, and I'm just going to repeat it because you're smart and you said something smart and that, (laughs) and that is, uh, write down goals. Uh, there is something unbelievably powerful hmm. about actually getting something out of your head, writing it on paper, telling someone uh, that you're going to do that. And I think I've done zero research, but I know from my own experience that I'm so much more likely uh, to hit goals or at least come closer to the mark. Uh, than if I had never, if I had just thought it and, and never um, gone beyond that. So true. And, um, you know, even, and I'll put the link to your blog in, in here as well, but even the way that you put that out on your blog, it, that's another way of keeping yourself accountable, isn't it? You, you've put that out to everyone. So, you know, you've got that another level of accountability on top of it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and truthfully, I write those posts for myself. Yeah. Uh, and sort of a way to see my own milestones. But it is absolutely, uh, you're right. When I, when I put it out there in front of the world, it's like, okay, well, I can't show up next year and not have done anything. <laughs> Well, you can tick off that you've written a book this year. Give that a big tick. Um, and go. we've, um, I don't know when this is going to come out, but the book is out on around about the 20th of March. And um, as I said, co-written with Diane Kinney. And it's going to be like, uh, I think it could be one of those little Bibles as a freelancer, just have it by your desk. And it'll just help help people just cut out all the stuff that you've had to, like you've said, you've had to learn the hard way. So I think it's going to be a great one. And I really appreciate you coming on the podcast today. You're, you're an absolute legend and we're we're privileged to have you on (laughs) oh well thank you so much for having me it's been a joy (laughs) thanks carrie bye-bye well i hope you enjoyed that episode as much as i did that carrie deals is one smart cookie remember to go and download the checklist at wpelevation.com slash carrie deals that's deals with one l Oh, and remember to go over to iTunes and leave us a rating uh, and a review because that really helps us. WPElevation.com slash iTunes. Until I see you next time, go elevate.